SmackDown 10 18 24, the amplified review on the Amped Up Show with BC. SmackDown, Solo Sokoa demanding that Roman Reigns acknowledge him, acknowledge the new tribal chief. To which Roman Reigns said, nah, I'm all set. <laughs> it was great. He said, acknowledge me or else. Roman said, or else what? It was great. We'll go over it. And I do have to say, man, props to Solo. Solo is starting to come into his own. I will say that in this cold open teaser. I'll elaborate when we go over that part of the show. But Solo is starting to realize he doesn't have to play the beta tough guy behind Roman Reigns, that silent enforcer. He's going to have to talk a lot more, and it has to match who Solo is as a character. And he's going to have to evolve. I think he's starting to realize this wrestling thing has a lot of layers, and now we're starting to see, at least scratching the surface of what Solo can do. Hunter Hearst Helmsley having him lose 41 matches in a row after John Cena took that annihilation from Solo gave Solo the most biggest victory anybody can have over John Cena and Hunter squandered it. Absolutely pissed all over it. (laughs) That did not help. But now, after all this time, Solo is starting to come into his own. That's, That's the good news. Did this segment land last night? We'll talk all about it. The tag team division took a trip to Motor City. The women's division is just as awkward as it's ever been with Lash Legend and Candy LeRae picking up victories in two quick matchups. Very quick matchups. One even quicker than the other. I'll say that again if you missed the show. Lash Legend is... And Candy LeRae. BC, what's wrong with it? You got to build new stars. No, you have to build the stars you already have now properly. That's what you do first. Once you build the stars you already have properly, correctly, then you can talk about new stars. Logic and common sense, BC. We can't talk that. And Kevin Owens, he was supposed to be the biggest part of the show, right? Gave SmackDown, gave WWE an ultimatum. It's almost like KO was going to hold a a takeover situation. And instead, they just had Kevin Owens change his mind during the show, basically. Cody Rhodes. Oh, this is a gem. Cody Rhodes and Gunther. There's no steam behind this, right? Other than the fact that we're going to get a good wrestling match on a wrestling show. What a concept. We were really hoping that last night on SmackDown, this really became, even with just two weeks left, actually became a story. Actually got us invested in more than there's just the match that it's going to be. But no, Cody Rhodes <laughs> stood in the ring and he, he asked Gunther. Gunther wasn't there. But he looked at the hard cam and he said, what do you want to talk about? And then he invited, he proceeded to invite Gunther to SmackDown next week so they can talk about their match at Crown Jewel face to face. I'll say that again. Cody invited Gunther to SmackDown next week. So you got to wait a whole nother week. This, this week, nothing. Cody just by himself. And this was all just to invite Gunther to a face-to-face next week so that they can talk about their match for Crown Jewel. But didn't, didn't we just do that last week? I thought that's what we just did last week. They met face-to-face like Cody is asking to do with Gunther. They, we just, yeah, that was last week. We just did that, right? They face-to-face, they talked about their match, they, they had some words, I believe they even showed mutual respect. They shook each other's hands, right? I mean, there's so much respect, right? And they they, they talked and they they then they, they maybe they winked at each other, right? Maybe they exchanged t- t- tortellini Alfredo recipes, and then they shook hands, and then they went their separate ways. A week later, Cody is by himself saying, "Hey, I, I'm inviting you to meet face to face to talk to our met. Did you that you?" Just it would 
You did it. You did the same thing last. What do you mean you got? Smackdown 10, 18, 24. <laughs> We're going to talk all about it. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying to comprehend this level However low you have the bar, this type of creative from Hunter Hearst Helmsley, I'm trying, man. I, was the show at least better than my than what my cold open teaser is telling me? I took, I did my due diligence. I did my whole notes. It's on one sheet of paper. That's never good. That tells you not a lot happened. Uh, but we'll go over it all, man. It's all coming up. Let me get a huge swig of coffee. Take you guys to the opening signature. Come back. We'll talk all things SmackDown 10, 18, 24. And we'll do it right now. Let's do this. Sokoa and the Bloodline. Solo is starting to find his rhythm uh, on the mic. I told you in the cold open. He's starting to just like relax a lot more there's still some stuttering and some flipping of words right he gets caught up a little bit but he's starting to come into his own when they started chanting yeet it was a quick no yeet and then he just turns his back to the camera camera b i think it was not even the hard so he turned i mean that was just that was really good um nxt i don't know if you guys know this he, he caught some pretty decent promos in nxt a lot of people just don't even remember that run Um, But it's not like he can't talk on the mic, but they tried to make him just like this silent enforcer type to Roman Reigns. And because of that, you feel like you have to play this kind of pseudo or beta tough guy. Your whole existence now, your whole character now has to ride on that. No, there's a personality with Solo. There's a lot more he can offer. There's layers to Solo. He just doesn't have to be this like tough guy. But then when he talks, it doesn't really... It doesn't coincide. It doesn't groove. It doesn't just gel, right? So when he starts to talk a little bit more freely, almost like a Jimmy or a Jey Uso, his brothers, right? And he starts to talk a little bit more freely and you start to develop some sense of solo, right? There's there's deep insecurity with solo. He truly wants to be the tribe. He wants the respect of Roman Reigns and his brothers, right? You're starting to hear that in his words, and you're feeling that. Even last night, right, Jay Uso came out, and there was a moment, and I'll go over uh, the bulk of what they said, but there was a moment, I don't know if I put this in my notes, so I'll say it now. Jay, like, said, hey, little brother, something, 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 blah, blah, blah. Solo says something back, and he, and he followed it up with, and stop calling me your little brother, and he like ducks his head, and he lifts his eye, you know, and, and almost like he, this is something I wanted to say in private, but I'll say it right now to everybody, stop calling me your little brother, right, it's like I'm, I'm tired of that, I, it's my time now, I'm always the little brother, I'm always Roman's little side chick, the enforcer, I'm always good behind Roman, he'll never allow me in front of him, no, I want it now, so it's almost like he's playing, he's playing tribal chief, right? Which is what we all say anyway behind the scenes, right? Fans are like, "There's a bootleg bloodline." Um, it's it's the the Dollar General version of the original, but it, it's like Solo is now it, he's confirming that with his own insecurities in his promo. He went out and got all of this muscle. He went out and got all of these people because he wants to show that he can do what Roman did, right? I I just think that's that's what needs to be done with Solo because he was severely damaged as a talent, as a character. John Cena came in and did the world for Solo. I've never seen somebody with the... The level of star power like John Cena come in and take an L, do the deed... I don't want to necessarily call it passing the torch, but he did the ultimate deed to put somebody over in Solo. It wasn't just a loss like he let Austin give him at WrestleMania, Austin Theory. This was an annihilation. And Cena went to H and said, here you go, man. I did everything I could for Solo. I just got my ass whooped for him. I made this dude look like he's Andre the Giant. I got to go back to Hollywood. Uh, Good luck. You know, I did everything I could. And John Cena left in the very next night and beyond. Hunter Hearst Helmsley put him on a 41-match losing streak. Television, PLEs, live events across the entire country and abroad. Why would you do that, man? 
John Cena just did the ultimate thing, unless that's just an ultimate F you to John Cena. All right, you're you're leaving now, and I'm not going to do anything with that, because that's what he did. Hunter absolutely, absolutely pissed all over what John Cena did for Solo. And you know that factually. That's not just what BC's telling you, right? Look at to this day. Solo never got over. Didn't matter what position they put. They made this dude create his own faction, and he's the leader. And fans are like, nah. Nobody cared about him and Cody's in those matchups. In fact, that was just Hunter putting him in Cody matches and just having him lose twice, by the way. Roman's already pinned Solo. Solo's booking has been bad. So what can Solo do to help himself when you get time on this, the microphone? Right? CM Punk <laughs> has taught everybody that many moons ago. When you get time, don't worry about what they're giving you. Think about what you're taking. Take that time and you start delivering. You start telling the audience why they should care. You got to show that side of Solo Sokoa. It's starting to come out now, man. He's coming into his own. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Some might think that's too much praise already on someone like Solo PC. But I'm telling you, man, I always say, right? We're not just going to call out negative for 20 minutes at a time. Right When we start to see something good, that's what we have to harp on and stay with and talk about. Those positives, more of that will lead to greater. Solo Sokoa, man, he's coming into his own on that microphone, I'm just saying. So Jey Uso hits the ring, like I said, because again, brand split. So why would Jey Uso not have his music blasting? Why would Jey Uso not be in gear? Why would Nick Aldis stop Jey Uso? Ah, come on, fuck it. <laughs> I only have two hours. I have all this talent that can't get out of catering. I have talent I told to stay home because we have nothing for them. But come on over, Raw. And on Monday night, they did the same thing with five of SmackDown's talent. There's no explanation. Nobody's talking about a brand split. Uh, but there's a brand split, supposedly. So Jay's out there. He's yeeting all around. Jay says, you want to fight for power? That's fine. But you know better than to fight over the Oofalea or Oompa Loompa, Lufa Lufa, whatever you call this thing. Yeah, the, the, the tribal lay is what I call it. But it's like the ultimate tribal lay, right? Um... So he's like, if you want to fight over the Uvalea, you know better than that. That's got to be earned, not taken, he says. You need to stop dividing the family. So this is where Solo says, I'm not dividing the family. I'm uniting the family. And there's always room in my bloodline for you and Roman. All you got to do is acknowledge me. That's it. Pretty simple rules, right? Jay says... You say you're not dividing the family. You say you're uniting it. Then why'd you have to go get all of them, he says. Why'd you have to go and get Tama and Tonga and Jacob? And specifically for Jacob, this was hilarious. He goes, you know, there's a reason we all stayed away from him. <laughs> Almost like he's, he's just so out there, left field with a hockey stick that none of the family ever re really interacted with him. That was just so funny. He's like, there's a reason we stayed away from him, dude. <laughs> that was awesome. And, uh, and and then even funnier was he's looking at Solo still, but he's talking about Jacob. And he's like, and if he keeps looking at me sideways like that, if he keeps staring at me, I'm going to knock his ass out. <laughs> and then he looks right at Jacob. And Jacob lowers his hands because he's doing his best Paul Heyman. And you know Paul Heyman has his, his fingerprints all over this bloodline. Right. He is he is coaching Jacob Fatu to do what he's doing because Jacob Fatu is doing exactly what Paul Heyman would do to Roman Reigns. And he's got the, you know, he's got the hands up. And when when Jay said, if he keeps staring at me, I'll knock his ass out. And he gets right in Jacob's face. Jacob just lowers. He's like, Did you just say? <laughs> oh, it was great, man. That was actually that literal it, it was a legit LOL moment for BC. That was funny, man. Jay stepping up to all the dudes. Jay gave no fucks there, bro. None. Jay stepped up to all of them. Um, and then uh, after the knockout line, if he keeps staring at me, I'll knock him out. Solo says, so what's it going to be? Are you with us or are you against us? Jay simply says, next time I see you, it's going to be different, Oos. Leaves it obviously open for war games in 
a roundabout way, right? Or a pretty direct way. <laughs> There's many ways you could make this very direct, but he says, next time you see a, it's going to be very different. I think what he means is there's going to be a lot of steel structure, a lot of a, a big old fence, right? A cage with a rooftop is going to be surrounding them and it's going to be war games. Next time I see you, it's going to be different. So good promo work from Solo and Jey Uso. Did it have a definitive finish for that segment or s- later in the night? Not really. But they would obviously add to it in the final segment. So it's it, on one hand, it's a good setup. On the other hand, you could easily look at this as 15 to 20 minutes of what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> what is Jay and S- so Solo just wants Jay to acknowledge him now too? But guys, listen, that's how you got to slowly integrate Jay Uso back. I love how they're doing it. All right, last week Roman saying no to Jimmy. I, I don't even want to ask. Then on Raw, Jimmy's asking Jay, dude, come on over. I'm not supposed to be here, but then again, there is no brand split. So why are you not supposed to be there? Fucking Adam Pierce wouldn't mind, All right? Hey, you're here. You want you want some TV time? Go out there, man. I'll cancel the next match with my own raw stars but jimmy's asking him and jay's like no nah, us now get out of my face right and then jay shows up just to talk to solo not to align with roman and you would see that later in the night not to align with solo but just say cut this shit man i got my brother showing up to raw to try to get me back involved in this i don't want none of this i want you to stop and i want him to get his out head out of his ass Jay Uso, man. So that's that's the story. So a lot of people think this is just filler for a start. BC seeing the story, or what I hope is the continuation of a good story, because I like that. You know, slow build sometimes, guys. I know it's a microwave society, but relax, relax. R e l a x. Just relax. You don't want fucking out of nowhere. Jey Uso's just realigned with Roman Reigns and they're reforming the bloodline after all that they went through in the breakup. And today's wrestling fan just wants it all done in a week, man. Now ah, let's go. Ah, let's set it up. They are. They're doing it. Jay will realign. Let it play out, man. Let, let, it, let it play out. I always hate when I'm... <laughs> be asleep, man. Just let it play out. <laughs> there's times where you let it play out and there's times you just... You gotta get to it. Because we have to start a, an actual build. Um, this is like the the appetizer to the build to war games, right? You have to restructure everything. You have to find a logical reason why these people are getting back together. The band is getting back together. It's a process. So that I'll give Hunter credit for. You know, that's one of those scenarios. You have to drag it out. He's not the best at long-term storytelling, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He never has been. Um, He's very day-to-day, hour-to-hour. You hear that in his interviews, right? He's very transparent with that, right? I didn't know. We didn't know what we were going to do, but uh, I'm glad that it worked out, and uh, we decided to go this and then. I'm like, oh, my God. You ever have a plan that's more than three weeks? So that was your first part of of the show. And then... And then the tag team division. We're doing a stupid little uh, mini tournament again because this is what we do. There's no tag division. A lot of good tag teams. In fact, Monday night, we got a really good one back. And they got their old name back, War Raiders. Last night, we got a debut of one of the best tag teams in the world. We'll go over that in the second triple threat tag match because there was two of them. And then the winners of those two tag triple threat matchups, they meet each other next week. And whoever wins that gets a shot at the championships. So this new debuting team, by the way, only has to win two matches and they're already getting a tag title shot. That's the tag team division that we are currently in. And then you wonder why BC says it's irrelevant. It's non-existent. You have good teams. You have great teams. You have no division. Every time we need a number one contender, we just do a battle royal of all the tag teams or we do a, a weird tournament or we do what's called tag team turmoil. It's the same old. They ne- Hunter never wants to just build an actual story in a feud with the tag teams. And then when it comes time for the title matchups, he doesn't even want to put them on his PLEs. So the tag titles are defended on a SmackDown before the PLE or a Monday Night Raw after the PLE. You can't build a, a division like that, man. You're telling your audience, why should they care when the company doesn't care? So that's a major problem. Problem, obviously. You know that, man. This is just BC preaching it to you. You guys know that is a huge issue. 
And they're doing it again. It's just, hey, we'll throw every tag team out there. We'll put three teams in each match. So six teams within two matchups. Whoever wins those those two matchups, they'll face each other. And whoever wins that little mini tournament match, we got our next match. How is that making fan, getting fans interested? It's not. Nobody's going to school or nobody's like the adults are not showing up to work in their cubicles and going, hey, hey, Mike, did you hear? Man, did you see the little mini tournament? Dude, man, Street Profits, they, they got another title shot. This is going to be wild, man. What a mini tournament, Mike. Okay, I got to get back to the paperwork, man. Well, we'll talk about it at lunch. We'll talk about the first triple threat. You see DIY in the first one? Oh, man, this, this tag team turmoil is wild. Nobody's doing that, man. There's no excitement. You're doing a bunch of wrestling matches for the sake of having wrestling matches that nobody's going to care about or even remember two seconds after it finishes, and you damn well know it. BC's rocking out, brah. I had a lot of coffee already. So in this matchup, DIY defeats the Street Profits in pretty deadly. Again, triple threat tag. So now DIY faces the winner of the uh, next triple threat. Should we just go over it now? There was a matchup before it and a Cody Rhodes. In it, but let's just do the whole tag team thing right now, if you don't mind. A couple segments later was the next triple threat. This was Humberto and Garza versus Waller and Theory versus Motor City Machine Guns. And and I couldn't help but laugh when they showed the graphic for Motor City Machine Guns. <laughs> when they showed this graphic, guys, for MCMG, I couldn't help but laugh when I actually saw it because it was on a WWE show, right? Motor City Machine Guns on a WWE show. It said Machine Guns, and I couldn't help but think if this were Vince McMahon, they would literally be called the Motor City Water Guns. <laughs> Motor City Guns. Vince would be like, we can't call them Machine They're water. In fact, what am I saying? Vince would never even allow that. They would have to be called the Motor City Super Soakers. <laughs> <laughs> you listen we laugh but this dude took a team called war raiders and he made them the viking expedition or, or, or the viking adventures or viking Ex expedition but what the hell were they the viking viking exciters viking encyclopedias what were they man viking expedition right why doesn't that sound right Viking experience. No, no, no. That doesn't sound right. I don't know what it was, man. But <laughs> he turned them into an, uh, uh, an expedition. He turned them into a, a fucking uh, museum. <laughs> Look at the Vikings, ma. So, I mean, you call, the Vikings. I, I mean, you're expecting the Green Bay Packers to whoop in a, in a divisional match. You think Vince McMahon wouldn't take the Motor City machine guns and call them the Motor City Super Soakers? I can't, we can't call, them, can't call them the machine guns. So, uh, I mean, that is definitely, I mean, these are words that uh, are not, were never, never were going to be allowed in WWE. War Raiders, Motor City Machine Guns. So, you know, Endeavor is being lenient here. Hunter, Hunter's like, I got to have the names, man. This is the only way they're going to think I'm solely in charge. <laughs> But uh, pretty cool. They got to keep their name. It was just wild to see that graphic in the words machine guns on WWE television. That was wild. Uh, match was less than 10 minutes with a commercial break. So we had about six or, six or seven minutes of TV time. Uh, the Super Soakers get the W. Humberto took the pin, was looking up at the lights. So uh, one match, one in the books. A W for the Super Soakers. So now it's going to be DIY versus Super Soakers next week. Faces versus faces, basically. I mean, Motor City is, you know, everyone's excited to see them. They just arrived. They're going to be faces. DIY is, for all intents and purposes, faces. And this is Hunter, man. So now the audience will be split. And they're like, well, what do we go? What do I, yeah, I feel bad because I'm not cheering for the other faces. So then they just kind of remain silent. But uh, they'll probably yell some, this is awesome, right? I mean, that's what they're depending on, right? It's going to be a good wrestling match, man. Think about it. Tommaso, Johnny Gargano, first Motor City, the match, Beasley. I know, I know. It's going to be, it, the match will be good. 
But you know, 2024 wrestling, man, aren't we just past that? Aren't we just past the the good wrestling on a wrestling show? Like d- d- it, <laughs> a mini tournament from the jump is just redundant and stupid. But if your soul, your end game was just two face teams facing each other, who's being built in this, man? One of them's got to lose. DIY can't take another L. There's no way Motor City's taking an L in their second matchup, which, by the way, if they do win, are they just going straight to the titles and taking them? (laughs) Within one month, they got a title match and the championships, and there's going to be individuals going, I don't know why BC says there's no tag division. That's why. It's anarchy. The only thing worse than the tag division might be the women's division in WWE under under Hunter Hearst Elmsley. We'll get to that in a second. In fact, why wait? Let's get to it right now, man. <laughs> Lash legend in Piper Niven. Lash legend defeats Piper Niven quickly and clean. Clean and quickly. Lash Legend. Now, much props to Lash Legend. I don't have any issue with it. Legend takes a lot of heat over in NXT because, yeah, there, there's a lot of individuals, a lot of ladies that are better right now. And Lash has still a long way to go. But she's coming to her own. She's gotten much better. Um, should she have leapfrogged to the main roster? Of course not. But there's reasons for that, and I'm not going to get into it. And, uh, and, and there's been articles on that. Too. I mean, we... we there's a whole reasoning behind it, right? And and so now Lash Legend looks to be on the, the and, and probably Jackson is going to be with her. And we know, like that's the, Lash Legend is one thing, but when you go Jackson's on the main route, how did she leapfrog? But but, but Roxy still with the and Cora just got and but Jada Parker and Lola would have been good. I mean, you could go on and on, right? Um, Booker T was just talking about JC Jane and how like uh, she's been ready for the main roster. They just, there's just no, no plans to do that. But Jackson and legend are having all these main roster matchups. Point is there's no, no shade over to legend, you know, do your thing, but to have her show up and just defeat Piper Niven so quickly, so simplistically, you know, this isn't one of those situations where you go, hey, building new stars, BC. What about building the ones you have? Like, what are you doing with Piper Niven? What are you doing with Chelsea Green? Chelsea Green just was the buzz of the wrestling world from a dumpster match. This is a gimmick match that we were supposed to just laugh at and go, oh, here we go. Hunter's just doing the same thing Vince did, recycling garbage literally and figuratively. But what Chelsea did in that match with Meechan that was good it's like have something for them immediately man change your plans read the room chelsea green has been irrelevant ever since piper niven is doing this a simplistic quick l to lash legend and get this that's not even the half of it man you want to do that hey whatever dude you can easily go man i feel so bad for piper but hey salute to lash legend out of nowhere on the main roster (laughs) picking up w's over main roster talent when lash legend never really went to the promised land in nxt never even sniffed it but all of a sudden she's on the main roster taking out talent like that and getting tag title opportunity doesn't right something doesn't pass the smell test but okay, you can give props over the legend and, and just move on. Go, eh, we'll see where this goes. But what they did to Bailey last night with Candy LeRae? What are you? How does that make sense? How is it then in the realm of making sense? Candy LeRae! Don't act like you knew Candy was still with the company. <laughs> I mean, we know Johnny's there. I mean, but you don't think about Candy, right? You're not there, or at the bare minimum, you're going, is she on SmackDown? Right? You did you forgot which brand she was on. That's how irrelevant Candy LeRae has been with Indy. But last night, they had Candace LeRae and Nia Jax defeat Bailey and Naomi. I'm gonna say that again. Candy LeRae and Nia defeated Bailey and Naomi. LeRae pins Bailey. Candy LeRae pinned Bailey. On one hand, you want to say fucking salute to Candy, right? <laughs> Do your thing. 
On the other hand, what are you doing to Bailey? What are you doing, Hunter? You just plucked Candice LeRae out of nowhere, and you're like, oh, now's your time. <laughs> you don't want to, like, you know what? Like, that did not, nobody next week is going to go, oh, it's Candace. Oh, why are we so excited, right? Somebody, a casual fan. Why are we excited? It's, is she good? She just be Bailey. Lorraine pins Bailey. Indy Hartwell would interfere, right? The huge assist to Indy Hartwell. I think she like chucked Bailey face first into the outside post, chucked her back in the ring. Candy turns her into some pixie dust. There's not enough pixie dust in the world. There's not enough magic. Expecto Petroleum. You can wave your magic wand all you want. Harry Potter himself could not make BC believe that Candice LeRae in any booking situation should be beating Bailey right now in time. All honesty, as always, I had totally forgotten LeRae and Indy were even on the roster. Bare minimum forgot they were a part of the SmackDown roster. I really had to go, which brand are they even? And, and honestly, and that's a true story. I had to go, are they on the blue brand? <laughs> or did they just like show up? Because WWE does that, right? They have nothing for them, so they just have them show up to the other brand and hope that nobody asks questions. So at first I went, are they even on SmackDown? And then I thought, immediately I thought, I don't even care. I don't even care to do, to do the research on it. Furthermore, even with interference, Larray pinning Bailey uh, just gave BC a good laugh at first, right? Because that's all you can do sometimes, right? Something sometimes things are so ludicrous you just laugh. Um, this did nothing for everyone involved, and it just exploits yet again how clueless Hunter Helmsley is with the women's division in totality. Hunter Hearst Helmsley, his two biggest areas of concern and, and there's even more uh, the, the mid card is so bland redundant and, and just bad it seems like on smackdown your mid card is like four dudes recycled every week andrade and Mello and santos and la night i mean how I, it's it's like watching it's like watching an episode of a series and they just play the same episode every single week the same one it's just a rerun so there's there's so many areas Hunter is just so lacking and clueless and just bad in booking, but the women's division and the tag division, they need the most help yesterday. Let's just leave it at that, right? That's that's BC being generous. Candy Lorray. I mean, we got to the point where, where Hunter's just like, all right, we badly booked them so bad, we did nothing with them for months. Let's have let's let them have a night, right? <laughs> have them show up out of nowhere, pick up a W over Bailey. If it lead if it's leading to something, that's one thing, guys. If you can see like, oh, there's something fun going on, right? Nothing, guys. After the victory, they're just like, well, what a big victory for Candice. Let's go backstage. To, and then they went to like, who was it? Like a Roman Reigns video package or something. Like if something was set up. Nothing. They got nothing. You'll probably see Candy win another match next week or probably already lose, right? We'll just keep making her 50-50. Or maybe she wins another couple weeks and then all of a sudden she's losing five in a row. That was your SmackDown women's division, guys. That's your SmackDown women's division. That you you literally had two quick matchups. And your big stars were Lash Legend and Candy LeRae. If you didn't watch the show, that's literally what happened. And then you go to the main event segment. Because, guys, um, that was your main event matchup. And you know what I forgot to talk? Actually, hold on. Before I get to the last segment, let me go to Cody Rhodes. I believe he started like the second hour, right? He went to the ring. I forgot to even mention this because I, I think I skipped over and went to the two tag team matches so I could keep them cohesive. But they were separated by a couple of segments. One of those was Cody Rhodes. So let me talk that real quick. So Cody Rhodes comes to the ring and for five minutes and 12 seconds, roughly, he proceeds to just talk about like how this is a dream match. How like what if, you know, Nick Bockwinkle got to face Ric Flair and Goldberg got to face uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Bunch of like dream match scenarios that never happened. But we, 
we're going to get to see Gunther versus Cody. Listen, it's a match we all go, yeah, I mean, you know, that's going to be a good match when it happens. Right? We all said that. Gunther and Cody is going to be a good match. You know, hopefully they do proper build and it's a good story. No build, no story. Hot shotted to Crown Jewel. Champion versus champion for a weird, obnoxiously large championship title that is so big that it's goofy. Goofy. And I'm not talking about a Disney character. This is obnoxious, this championship. So that's what they're fighting over. The best in the world. It's like the best in the world trophy that Shane McMahon won a few years ago in Saudi at Crown Jewel, right? This is what they always do, right? There's a King of the Ring tournament in Saudi. We're going to find out who the best in the world is. So they took Gunther and Cody. They hotshotted it without a story, without a feud. And now they're just going to have a traditional wrestling competition match. And afterwards, they'll do what they just did last week. They'll shake hands like Gunther and Randy Orton did. This is Hunter's WWE, right? It's all about athletic competition. (laughs) It's a real sport now. Forget the storylines. Forget heels and, and faces. Let's shake hands left and right, man. Let's show each other respect. Let's see who the best is. I don't want to see who the best predetermined wrestler is, man. I want stories. I I want to see the good guy and the bad guy mix it up. What's the reasoning? What's at stake? Take us on the roller coaster ride. This is it. We're going to find out who the best in the world is yet again in Saudi. So he's out there talking about how this is a dream match. And then, and then guys, he goes, Cody Rhodes says, um, so Gunther, make no mistake. I'm going to ask you when we meet again face to face, what do you want to talk about? He actually said that. And I'm like, what? That doesn't even make sense. What do you mean? You're going to ask him what he wants to talk about. And then he proceeded to invite Gunther to SmackDown next week so that he has a chance to meet him face to show face to face and talk about their match at Crown Jewel. But they just did that last week. They met face to face. They talked about Crown Jewel. They traded jabs and some words. And then they showed mutual respect with a nice handshake. I'm sure they wanted to hug each other, but there was time restraints and Gunther had to walk away. What do you mean you're inviting him so that you can look him in his eyes face to face and talk about the match? You just did it. This type of booking is not just, it's not just wrong. It's so damn bad. So damn bad. And you want to find like just a nugget of of, of positivity in it, right? You can't. Not logically, not if you're using common sense, not if you're being truthful. There's no way you pluck positivity from such garbage. This was so awkward, man. Cody Rhodes just yaps. Last week, all he did with Gunther face-to-face was yap and they shook hands. This week... You're supposed to build, right? It, it, something, a story or, or, or a matchup for a PLE pay-per-view, it's supposed to build as time goes on, right? So you build the excitement. They did nothing last week face-to-face but shake hands. This week, it's just one of them in the ring talking. And then that just sets up next week where they can talk some more face-to-face like they did last week. This is it. And, 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 and there's actually people going that, that want people like B.C., and my amplified unit, they want us to lower our bar and our standards. They're befuddled. They're shocked that BC and the unit were not on board with this type of booking. I don't know what their problem is. What, what do they expect, man? I mean, this is, this is beautiful storytelling by Hunter. Man, if you only knew beautiful storytelling, because I've seen decades of it. This, this ain't it. But if you think it is, it's your prerogative. I will never lower my bar for such mid-level garbage. And then we went to the main event, which was again just a Roman Reigns appearance back in the middle of the ring. Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa face to face. Roman says... Roman says, I promised my father I would fix this. I could fix this. What do I have to do? He tells Solo. Solo says, that's simple. Just acknowledge me. 
Roman then does actually acknowledge, acknowledge him, but <laughs> Solo's like, no, 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 acknowledge me as your tribal chief, or else, he tells Roman. And Roman gets pissed. Or else what? He gets he gets enraged, right? Or else what? Roman's ready to just take his dome piece off. And Solo's like, this is what I mean about Solo coming into his own. He doesn't have to just play a tough guy. Show passion, man. You know, break out of it, man. Show some of that individualistic character that you do possess. Because there is personality in Solo. And he's like, nah, see, that's it. I knew it. I knew that was the that was in you still, Roman. I knew there was the, still the same Roman Reigns that I know. So he's like, I knew you were going to do that. I was like egging you on. I was pushing the buttons and I knew you would fall in line in suit. I was playing that fucking the strings like a puppet master. I love it, man. So he got Roman to kind of come out of what he was doing and show his true colors, basically. So Solo's like, nah, the only difference now is that I'm in charge and I have the plan. And he snaps his fingers and here comes the bloodline. So bloodline comes out and they come out dragging Jim Uso, by the way. Jimmy Uso was beaten up backstage. They drag him out. And that's going to lead people to, by the way, did, did, we, did we see the... Because again, I had the, the big screen with the Yankees going as well. Did they did they show the beat down backstage or not? I, I missed it if they did. If they didn't, this would lead you now to believe like, uh, could Jimmy like still switch sides? Right? I mean, they're just dragged him out. We didn't see the actual beat down. But again, maybe we did and BC was checking out the Yankees at that moment. But Jimmy Uso was dragged out, clearly attacked. Then they hit the ring. Roman's able to clear the ring with the heels, man. Roman has the advantage first. He puts his little Oompa Loompa on his, around his head. And once he does that, Solo hits him with a low blow to the, uh, to, to, to the other Oompa Loompas. Roman's, yeah. His other, um, we'll just, you guys get the idea. It, that'll, that'll take you down pretty quick. And Solo regains possession of the uh, Oompa Oompa. And... And then the bloodline just attacks him, man. Solo spike, some stomps, and they pose to the hard cam with Roman Reigns selling the attack um, vividly, and we go off the air. So, again, did anything massive happen in the storyline? Absolutely not, right? But it's still slowly planting those seeds, or at least the seeds are planted in it. And what's to come is growing slowly. <laughs> we hope anyway, man. We hope Hunter's got a, a, a longer plan for this. That's going to take us into and through War Games Survivor Series. Because uh, I'm good with this. They're slowly and, and eventually Roman's going to go like, all right, I've had enough. It's not even I need the help. I'm getting it. And we're, we're absolutely eradicating you. We're, we're just wiping you out. Whether that's bringing in Jey Uso or even a Sami Zayn. Who knows? Old school bloodline. So, this is a show that, uh, it's ups. It, it, it's, uh, I mean, it was cool seeing Motor City. Uh, it just sucks that the, the tag division is still what it is. Uh, for the ladies, you, you say props to Candy and, and Lash. And then you're befuddled that Candy and Lash was your big selling points for the ladies last night. That was it. And Bailey and Naomi and, and Piper all have to take these L's because you know there's nothing for them even when they're collecting W's. Just imagine if they're getting L's. Um, Roman Reigns, that the Bloodline story, as much as it is getting panned because there wasn't vivid, there wasn't huge impacts made last night. It was just the same Roman got beat down again. And Jay and Solo just had like 15 minutes of back and forth that didn't really do anything. BC is seeing, if done correctly, BC is seeing where all of this will lead to a really good payoff. So I was actually okay with everything that happened with Jay, Solo, Roman, Bloodline. I was definitely okay with all of that. That was To BC, that was the only bright part of this show. I, I mean, Lash, Legend, and Piper Niven, if that floats your boat, awesome. If Candy, LeRae, and Naya versus Bailey and, and Naomi is your cup of coffee, awesome. Um, if seeing a couple of schmaz tag matches, two triple threat tag matches is your cup of coffee, awesome. Um, but for BC, that's 
None of that is why I fell in love with pro wrestling. None of that is why I would take a couple hours on my prime time Friday night to watch. But thankfully, the Yankees were, were taking my interest. So uh, it was, I, I could laugh at a lot of the obnoxiousness from this SmackDown. We'll see what it leads to, man. Of course, Monday Night Raw is Monday night. I'm sure you'll see a plethora of SmackDown talent going over. And Adam Pierce will give them VIP access when they get to the uh, show. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you want TV time? It's Monday Night Raw. Of course, you can have my TV time SmackDown. That's what I got, guys. Amped up with BC. Uh, SmackDown's review, October 18, 2024. Until next time, and there will be that next time. Kick ass this weekend. BC will be right back with you next week with all the news in the pro wrestling world. Until then, BC in the unit saying check you. Salute.